Hey Guardians, welcome back to Destiny 2. A common sentiment I get in my YouTube comments and my Twitch chat usually starts off with the statement saying, Hey Cam, I took a break from Destiny 2 and am recently returning to the game. Can you give me some PvP tips? What has changed in the meta? What is there to do? People still play this game, lol question mark? All of those questions. I'm answering today in this video in a live commentary format. So first and foremost, the thing that has most significantly changed in the last year is the addition of Stasis. And recently, within the last month or two, Stasis received a batch of nerfs, which the community at large would say killed the subclasses. But take it from me, someone who lives in PvP and pushes every class to its limits, I'm telling you that Stasis is S-tier. It is still the best in the game, just it takes a little bit more emphasis on team building, and a lot of people play solo. So that's why you're not going to see it as popular, even though I can attest that it is just as powerful and is still my most used on two out of the three characters. You have your Titan, Warlock, and Hunter. You might also notice that there's more subclass customization compared to previously uh, what you're used to, whereas you get locked into a node that is balanced specifically. So with Stasis, there are cracks that can be shown every season when a fragment or an aspect is added with customization because every time they add one of these, they have to rebalance around everything else that already exists. So that's in a nutshell why you can maybe imagine that Stasis will be even more busted in the future, season after season after season. But if I had to summarize the PvP meta, there is one class that is slightly above the rest, if not very far above the rest, depending on your player skill. And that class is Top Tree Dawnblade on the Warlock. And I know, if you were playing a year ago, you're probably saying right now, wait, Top Tree Dawnblade is still the best? Yes, it's still the best. We're in a PvP meta where if I had to describe it, it's very ability-centric and special weapon-centric. And Top Tree Dawnblade allows you to get sky angles with the sniper rifle and fast movement to assist a shotgun, and then abilities that can chase you down with a melee or use a grenade to consume or throw a solar grenade at the floor and burn people so that they can't heal to make your follow-up even better. And then if you're floating an inch off the floor, you get melee energy refunded just for getting a kill while in the air, which is probably what you're already doing, as well as a super that can float off map and outlast other supers, as well as have a ranged attack and hyper mobility. It's the best class in the game, and I don't have to list all the reasons again to prove to you why. Take my word for this. So if you have to play the best thing in PvP, Top Tree Dawnblade. Also goes for free-to-play players. If you haven't bought any of the expansions, just hop on Top Tree Dawnblade. I think that movement exotics are still some of the best. I recently did a commentary with transversive steps, so check that out. Should be the previous video. But my typical build involves Starfire Protocol because I can sacrifice a grenade to get in-air accuracy on exotics that cannot get in-air accuracy like Arbalist. So, the thing that I find fun in Destiny is build crafting, like this. Making sure that every stat, every perk, every weapon, every subclass choice has a place and is fun to pilot. I also play stasis, but I usually reserve this for playing with teammates. Whereas if I'm solo, or if I'm playing with people who aren't going to take advantage of my stasis builds, then I will play Top Tree Dawn. And then if I play Stadia, and I'll explain that later, I play Chaos Reach. And that one might surprise you. You might be saying, wait, why are you going to play that subclass? I remember that wasn't that good. Turns out that the Chaos Reach has a piercing capability, so if someone's behind cover, the super will kill them, meaning that if you charge up a fast super with the Geomag Stabilizer boot, it can be really oppressive in Trials of Osiris, a 3v3 competitive game mode. Let me show you what a shade binder setup looks like. So first I need to choose the chess piece, then the glove. Yeah, you saw that right? I have another world. Some of y'all might be saying, wait, that was kind of bad back in the day. It slaps now because it gives you ability regen on a class that is very hungry for ability regen because at base your cooldown is slower. So this makes up for it. You can have 20 something second grenades when you start getting the whole engine running and you turn your grenades into turrets and these turrets can slow your opponent and freeze them stasis is all about crowd control putting a pause on the enemy 
and the Shadebinder Super is the best in the game. So this still has a lot of merit. If you're a Hunter player, nothing's really changed there either. Your best exotic is still Stompies. Movement's still the way to go. Use movement to put you in an ideal position to special weapon them or chunk some abilities their way. This one is min-max for Stasis. Stasis is the only subclass I play on Hunter, although you can make an argument that middle tree spectral blades, middle or bottom tree arc strider, or bottom tree golden gun, I guess even sometimes top tree golden gun, uh, can all vie for competitive. Um, anyhow, this is why I think Stasis is the king right now. You have a grenade called a glacier nade, and then you have an ability called shatter dive. You throw the grenade down, you use shatter dive when you're in the air, and it makes your character drop down uh, on their knee or something and blow up the grenade. You might think like, wow, that's so powerful, you can shut down shotgunners. And yes, you're right, you can do that. But what makes shatter dive crazy is you don't have to detonate the grenade. You can just use shatter dive whenever you feel like every seven seconds. So you can use something like the power of stompies to fly around the map, hold forward at somebody, and then when you overextend and make a bad push, you just shatter dive back the direction you came. It doesn't drop you straight down, it takes you at a slight angle, 45 degree angle, etc. backwards. And uh, you don't have to look the direction you want to travel, you can just hold the WASD or controller stick back and you will shatter dive in that direction. So in my opinion, this is the strongest way to play Hunter, although like I said, I'm a build crafter. Here is an alternate way I've been starting to play Hunter. Okay, and we're back. For some reason, it took me forever to find out exactly which armor pieces to use here. But let me explain what a advanced hunter build looks like. Kepri Sting, you throw a smoke bomb at the floor, and it gives you wall hacks. Like, you can straight up see an outline of a player through a wall. At 8 mobility, this is the class that governs your dodge ability on hunter as well as movement speed. Using a lightweight weapon grants you a plus 20 to that mobility stat, which does affect your dodge. By dodging, I proc a perk called Outreach, which reduces my cooldown on my Smoke Bomb, which is at the fastest possible cooldown. So ideally, I use my Smoke Grenade as much as possible to get wall hacks to just simply snipe people. For those on mouse and keyboard, I still think Snapshot Sights is the most powerful perk you can get on a sniper rifle. Uh, quick Draw actually got nerfed, so if you remember the Quick Draw perk that gave you an inherent plus 100 handling, it maxed it out. That is now a temporary bonus for one second or until you aim down sights. So quick draw on snipers is maybe not the way. What you want to go for is high inherent handling as well as some other perks that can help bridge the gap like celerity. Celerity is a perk that says you must have ability charges to improve handling. That's the important part about it at least. So yeah, you can play alternates to meta, but these are a lot more difficult to build. And you might be saying, well, where do I get armor components? Where do I farm exotics? That answers the question of, well, what is there to do in Destiny? In PvP, you can farm a best-in-slot sniper rifle, the Frozen Orbit. It is a high impact, so if you get a damage booster, you can body shot people. It also has snapshot as well as a host of other valuable perks. There might be some other PvP weapons I'm thinking about, but essentially you would just take tokens and turn them into the Crucible Handler shacks to get both materials to improve builds as well as an exotic engram every Valor reset, which you get for just playing. Let me see, where is my Valor? Right up here. The World Loot Pool has some valuable weapons, but for now I'm just going to stick to each place. The Vanguard has a valuable PvE rocket launcher and a valuable PvP and PvP uh, grenade launcher, a tube. So, rocket and a tube. Gambit has arguably the best in slot PvP hand cannon, the bottom dollar, as well as this has to be every perk perfect for this to be the case. But surprisingly, I'm, I'm going to tell you. The Borrowed Time Submachine Gun can have Range Finder and some sort of Damage Booster perk and outpunch the Aikilo Submachine Gun. So if you like using subs, that might be worth your time. There are two raids. We have the Bolt of Glass from Destiny 1. Yes, you heard that right. 
you go to the legend tab and you can go into the vault of glass which offers a best in slot shotgun and a pretty good hand cannon the fate bringer though it is a 140 rpm and is power crept by an energy hand cannon a fate bringer is kinetic that you obtain in the grandmaster nightfall playlist that will be launching soon so there will be a week in the Grandmaster Nightfall playlist where for completing one of these, you get a chance at the Shadow Price Auto Rifle, Palindrome Hand Cannon, or the Swarm Machine Gun. Trust the Palindrome is way ahead of the competition. If you hand cannon with a 140 RPM, this is where to get it. Now the Seasonal Quest. Let's go check my Seasonal Challenges and stuff. This is Season of the Splicer. Let me hop on my Titan while I explain this. Season of the Splicer has a seasonal activity, a horde mode, just like every season. And by doing this horde mode, you can upgrade... What, what are you upgrading? What's it called? I'm editing this anyway. This Splicer Gauntlet, which gives you various perks for making the activity easier and more profitable. Unfortunately, the Umbral Engram system is designed in a way that incentivizes you to fill out your spice, Splicer Gauntlet because it uses the same currency to get deterministic loot or to curb your RNG as it does to upgrade the Splicer. So any uh, semi-grinder will tell you that it is more efficient to level up the Gauntlet than to start going for weapon rolls. And so this is where you level up your Gauntlet and I am one perk from completing it. So I have pretty much everything I want, but for posterity's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade everything, and then I will start my weapon grind. And this does offer a couple good weapons for PvP build crafting and PvE. So let's go through a few of the options. The world loot pool is what I find the most valuable because it has a submachine gun called Escape Velocity, which can get some PvP variant rolls, but then again, when the Iron Banner PvP playlist rolls around, I think it's once per month, the multi mock that drops there can get a max range killing win roll that is extremely competitive. Oh, and speaking of competitive, how did I not mention the Dead Man's Tail? You obtain this in the Tangled Shore quest, the Presage. It's a very fun quest. I recommend going into it blind the first time. Very good, good showcase of what Destiny offers. Some decent difficulty the first time when you see it around, but every time after that, it should be a farm. What this gives you, and I'm scared to tell you this one, is the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle. Precision hits grant bonus damage. You might've noticed 120 RPM. We've never seen that before. It hits about as hard as a 120 RPM hand cannon. And get this, from the hip, because of the catalyst, you get a 150 RPM rate of fire, and it still hits the same 120 RPM damage arc type, and it's perfect hip fire. So if you're a mouse and keyboard player, this is the best gun in the game. So now that you know what the absolute best is, let's look at some other options. I believe you can get a lightweight shotgun from one of these. The Retro Futurist from the Shock Trooper one. Lightweight shotgun can be good. It has the quick draw perk, which is still really good on shotguns and 120 RPM hand cannons, but not so good on sniper rifles. The Grid Skipper I've heard great things about. And the Ignition Code is a potential PvP and PvE best in slide because you can get slide shot on a grenade launcher. So slide around and it auto reloads the uh, magazine. Uh, past that, you can focus armor, and this is why I wanted to show you this. And this can be a decent source. I've seen some very unique armor rolls, so definitely try this out to start with. And then after you have some basic armor in the, let's say, 55 to 60 range, with distribution where you want it, that's when you can start doing other activities to fill out the build. My top recommendation every single week, no matter if you're a new player, an old player, busy player, whatever, is to do the Pit of Heresy dungeon, specifically the boss checkpoint. So if you're in a clan, ask around to see if you can find a checkpoint for the boss, because 
it has a very high chance of being a high stat roll armor with crazy distribution. Alternatively, if we go to the tower over here and look at the Prophecy Dungeon, you can repeat farm this as many times as you want, the boss checkpoint for high stat roll armor. This is where I got 99% of my armor throughout the years, whenever it's uh, been available. And as for exotics, there are two methods. I recommend whichever one is faster or whichever one is more specific. So Grandmaster Nightfall, Master Nightfall has a chance to drop exotics. But that's the whole exotic pool. That's everything you see on this page. Versus a Lost Sector, which I'm about to show you, might have only chess piece. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one out of seven chance is a lot better than the one out of 30 or whatever the Nightfall is. As well as I think the drop rate can be more competitive in the Lost Sector depending on what it is. Today is one of the fastest Lost Sectors we've ever had, the Quarry, and it drops chess pieces. I'll just go ahead and do that in the background while I talk. I'm set up with the Strike Playlist Best in Slot Rocket Launcher. It has a perk that has a delayed bigger explosion. A Truth Teller, which I think was the World Loot Pool, has blinding grenades and auto loading. So I can do a lot of damage with my primary while both my tube and my rocket are reloading. The Seasonal Artifact has a bunch of perks that make rocket launchers and grenade launchers better. So if you want fast clears, you pretty much have to play by the artifact's rules. And I will be going on Sunbreaker because it helps deal with one of the boss's shields at the very end. Just for consistency. It really doesn't matter what I run. It's pretty easy. So on an ideal setup, I should be clearing these in less than 50 seconds. It is that quick. But because I'm on Titan, because I don't know exactly which speed routes I need here, it's going to take about a minute 30. And I'm okay with that, because this is still one of the most profitable exotic sources in the game. So much, in fact, that I think I'm going to look for duplicates of some exotics so that I can have different elements on it, maybe a PvE version and a PvP version of the same exotic. Mess my delayed explosion up, but I'm just gonna keep moving. I'll miss my Geo. Another delayed explosion. Wrong. I missed my GL to sunder his armor. But let's just make this quick. Hit the whole room with that Warmind Cell. Yes, those are still good. Don't need to reload that. And he should die any second now. That is not a Warmind Cell. I'm sure I'm not the only one who gets baited by that. And they're both dead right here. Yeah. And so just that easy, even making a bunch of mistakes. You can be the proud owner of an exotic chess piece. Speaking of, that is one of the better exotic chess pieces. Let me go ahead and upgrade my Heart of Inmost Light, because that's kind of what I'm after here. I want an Armamentarium actually more than that. Because I want to run... A Sentinel Titan with double suppressor nades. Since uh, stasis is less oppressive, I feel like I can make more plays with the Sentinel subclass. So I'm going to go to the Postmaster and retrieve my best in slot PvE exotic. This makes the Thunder Crash super hit a lot harder. Remember Celestial Nighthawk on the Golden Gun? It's pretty much that, but for Titan. So on the Vault of Glass raid... It's a viable strategy to just missile Atheon over and over and over again. Uh, past that, I also believe that you can obtain weapons of the past by doing raids to get a raid spoil token. And then turn that token in at this wall near the vault. Speaking of vault, I am almost at 500 spaces. If for some reason Bungie is watching this video, we need vault space. Desperately. 
Okay, so you can get one of the strongest shotguns in the game right here. Found Winter's Lie. Still good. You can get old exotics by spending an exotic cipher, which I think you get from Zur. He comes once a, um he comes for the weekend, but once a week. 240 spoils a conquest, and there is a method to farm them, which involves doing the Templar encounter of the Vault of Glass over and over and over and over again. Maybe I should have explained that. I'm, I'm sure you're keen on boss farming, but essentially you load the encounter, swap characters, rejoin back on your teammates, and then swap back to your original character uh, to do the encounter. And your other character will hold a checkpoint. I don't like this role, but it's better than the one I have, so I'm just going to leave it in my Postmaster to act as additional vault space. Yeah, that's how bad it is out here for us. What can I do for you, so, what I've listed now is a bunch of sources to help with build crafting, and you can explore some of what Destiny has to offer now. Oh man, I can make this 1322? Sick. Now I have swappables. Yeah, let's uh, quickly summarize here. So PvP, good guns. Vanguard, good guns. Gambit, good guns. Raid, good guns. Armor pieces from the dungeon on the moon. And the dungeon in the tower. Exotics. Lost sectors. Or Master Nightfalls, which also have a chance when the Grandmaster variant comes out to give you the best hand cannon in the game for 140s. Now, Trials of Osiris, that can give you the Igneous Hammer Adept, which has some of the highest probability of being a very strong roll. The problem with the Gambit weapon is this perk 1 and perk 2 node have a 1 out of 12 chance. So if you do the math on getting the right barrel, the right magazine, the right masterwork, the right perk one, and even a decent perk two, you, it's so improbable. So, so, so improbable. Which is why I like the Umbral Engram system, but unfortunately to get the Umbral Engram engine running, you have to spend a lot of time in the season doing challenges and upgrading via the seasonal activity. Team Scorched got a makeover and now you can rocket jump uh, straight up Quake style. This is a very fun playlist if you're looking to farm the Frozen Orbit. I should have mentioned the Deepstone Crypt Raid a little bit more. Deepstone Crypt Raid can give you a high impact sniper rifle that is a analog to the Frozen Orbit. It can also give you a slug shotgun called the Heritage, which is very useful for melting bosses with burst damage using two slug shotguns and the Anarchy. If I had to recommend any weapon to get off of this wall, it would be Anarchy or Wither Horde or the Xenophage. So now we're at the part of the video where someone inevitably asks, Hey Cam, I need some PvP tips. I need to adapt to the meta. We're just shotgun. Nothing fancy, no follow up kill, just shotgun. Only five minutes left. Just shotgun. LOL, just shotgun. Why are you trying to use a primary? Just shotgun. Why do we use a primary here in Destiny 2? Just shotgun. Why do we try to use a, a, a special weapon in here? Why do we try to use a shotgun? Just ability. Just throw abilities. Nothing's really changed. The balancing is kind of bad and it is very centric on movement, special weapon, and ability spam. Yes, your primary still can make a difference, but its impact is not as significant. Control. So my advice? Treat it like a deck builder, have an improvement mindset, but expect that Clown Town is always going to be a part of it, at least for right now. Bungie has shown strides in the way that they balance it, and the build crafting is some of the best it's ever been in Destiny. But as far as an emphasis on a fair PvP environment, a fun PvP environment, it's not really there yet. So don't stress, and look for a alternative game that fits that need. I've done that myself. I picked up Guilty Gear Strive, a fighting game. Uh, there is cheating rampant in all games right now, not just Destiny 2. 
so it's nice to play a game where someone just wants to get beaten badly by their opponent so they can learn and improve. Very nice. Less excuses. For PvE, Destiny really has never offered the difficulty that I want from it, even in the Grandmaster Nightfalls still. So I just opt to play a game called Fantasy Star Online 2, which just released a sequel called New Genesis. It's like open world, think Monster Hunter type game. And that currently offers the depth that I've been missing in PvE, although it's not a first person shooter. I'll just reload that. You might have noticed I'm playing PvP with old weapons. These are still best in slots and you can use them. So Bungie has a FOMO issue where they release a gun and then never give you an alternative source to reobtain it. So if you played a year ago and have these, bust these out. You might have some hidden gems and I might make a follow up video with this with what are the best in slot regardless of whether or not you can obtain them. Like my free to play account actually has some of the best weapons in the game even better than my main account. It's just my main account has full fledged builds with all the armor. Uh, so, part of this video was actually inspired by playing Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis because. Nice. I try to think of the videos that I value watching from other content creators, and right now, that would be just a simple video that explains something very quickly. It's not that much effort on the content creator's part, but it means a lot to the viewer who's new to the game. And trust, I'm new to the game, everyone's new to the game, so it's nice to learn a tidbit here and there. And I can never assume that my audience is up to date on anything or as knowledgeable, right? I play this game for a living, practically. Uh, that was a botched grenade, but I'll make it work. I'm kind of surprised he got the kill there. He shouldn't have been able to two tap. It should have took him three. Because you get a resist. You get damage resistance from standing near your nades. So even if I fail the nade, it's still useful. I could probably ricochet that to death. So yeah, expect a couple videos like this one that explain something in Destiny 2, give a quick opinion on it, and then the same kind of videos for Fantasy Star Online 2. And then when I start getting my bearings straight with Guilty Gear Strive, I might post a tourney highlight or just a match or something like that. So yeah, welcome back to Destiny. I still think this is a really fun game. Still a daily driver for me. And I only expect the PvP landscape to get a lot better. So I'm investing in build crafting now. That's where most of my daily day-to-day -day gameplay goes.